Volcanoes are classified based on their size, activity level, and potential impact on their surroundings. There are two main types of volcanoes, stratovolcanoes, also known as composite volcanoes, and shield volcanoes. However, supervolcanoes are a special type of volcano that are much larger and more powerful than either of these. Normal volcanoes can range in size from just a few hundred meters to several kilometers in height. In contrast, supervolcanoes are much larger, with a caldera that can be tens of kilometers wide. Normal volcanoes can erupt relatively frequently, sometimes several times a year, or even more often. In contrast, supervolcanoes have much longer intervals between eruptions, typically on the scale of tens or hundreds of thousands of years. While normal volcanic eruptions can be devastating to the surrounding area, they are generally much smaller than supervolcanic eruptions. A supervolcano eruption is typically considered to be one that releases at least 1,000 cubic kilometers of material, which is more than 100 times the volume of material released by the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. Normal volcanoes typically erupt with magma that is rich in silica and other minerals, which makes it very viscous and prone to explosive eruptions. In contrast, supervolcanoes typically erupt with magma that is much less viscous and more fluid, which allows it to flow over a much wider area. A normal volcanic eruption can have devastating impacts on the surrounding area, including destruction of property and loss of life. However, a supervolcanic eruption can have impacts that are felt around the world, including global cooling due to ash and gas released into the atmosphere, which can have a significant impact on global climate and agriculture. Scientists have just warned that supervolcanoes are currently our biggest threat and that they have the ability to devastate modern society. Michael Cassidy, a professor of volcanology at the University of Birmingham, said the following. Over the next century, large-scale volcanic eruptions are hundreds of times more likely to occur than our asteroid and comet impacts put together. End quote. This recent announcement comes after scientists were studying asteroids and our planetary defense and revealed that we are doing very little in regards to supervolcanoes. The researchers have also noted that the human population has massively increased since the last supervolcano eruption, further noting that increased human activity in volcanic areas, such as mining and geothermal power production, can sometimes trigger small to moderate eruptions. The researchers involved in the study said they came to this conclusion after looking at planetary defense systems around the world. Governments and global agencies spend varying amounts on planetary defense initiatives, depending on their priorities and available resources. The main focus of planetary defense is to identify, track and potentially mitigate the impact of near-Earth objects, such as asteroids and comets, that could pose a threat to the planet. The largest funder of planetary defense initiatives is currently NASA, which has an annual budget of around $150 million for its Planetary Defense Coordination Office. This office is responsible for leading NASA's efforts to detect and characterize potentially hazardous near-Earth objects, as well as developing and testing strategies to deflect or destroy them if necessary. Other countries and organizations also contribute to planetary defense efforts, but the funding amounts vary widely. For example, the European Space Agency has an annual budget of around $15 million for its Space Situational Awareness Program which includes near-Earth object detection and tracking. Rather worryingly, it was during this study that researchers said that there's very little we can do when it comes to supervolcanoes. Supervolcanoes are considered to be one of the most dangerous natural disasters that could occur on Earth. A supervolcano eruption is an incredibly powerful explosion that can release thousands of times more energy than a regular volcanic eruption and the amount of energy released is enough to cover an entire continent with ash, leading to global impacts. One of these eruptions can release an enormous amount of ash into the atmosphere, which can block out the sun for weeks, months, or even years. This can cause global cooling, which can impact agriculture and cause food shortages. The ash released during a supervolcano eruption can also combine with water vapor in the atmosphere, leading to the production of acid rain. This can damage crops, forests, and water supplies. A supervolcano eruption can also release pyroclastic flows, which are fast-moving currents of hot gas and volcanic matter, and these flows can reach speeds of over 100 kilometers per hour and can incinerate everything in their path. 
A supervolcano eruption can trigger tsunamis that can cause massive destruction along coastlines. The displacement of large volumes of water can lead to huge waves that can travel thousands of kilometers across oceans. The effects of a supervolcano eruption can be felt around the world. The release of ash, gases and other materials into the atmosphere can impact climate, leading to global cooling, changes in rainfall patterns and other effects. At this moment in time, researchers involved in these studies have said that a supervolcano eruption is incredibly dangerous due to its massive explosions, large ash clouds, acid rain, pyroclastic flows, tsunamis and global impacts. While these eruptions are rare, they've noted that the most famous supervolcano that is considered potentially active is the Yellowstone caldera in the United States, which last erupted approximately 640,000 years ago. Scientists have said that one of the most worrying outcomes after the eruption of a supervolcano would be the significant impact it would have on agriculture. The primary impact would come from the ash cloud that would be produced during the eruption. This ash cloud would block out sunlight, leading to a drop in temperature and reduced photosynthesis in plants. This would result in a decrease in crop yields and could potentially lead to famine and food shortages. In addition to the ash cloud, the eruption could also release large amounts of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. This gas can combine with water vapor to form sulfuric acid, which can fall to the ground as acid rain. Acid rain can damage crops and make soil less fertile, further reducing crop yields. The eruption of a supervolcano could also have long-term effects on agriculture, with researchers saying that the ash and other volcanic materials that are deposited on the ground would alter the chemical composition of the soil, making it less fertile. The volcanic ash can also release nutrients into the soil, which can lead to an initial boost in plant growth, but can also lead to nutrient depletion over time. The last time a supervolcano erupted was approximately 26,500 years ago, when the Taupo volcano in New Zealand erupted. This eruption was classified as an 8 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, which is the highest level on the index, with scientists saying that it produced more than 1,000 cubic kilometers of ash and volcanic material. The eruption was so powerful that it created a large caldera, or collapsed volcanic crater, which is now filled with water and known as Lake Taupo. Another notable supervolcano eruption occurred approximately 74,000 years ago, when the Toba caldera in Indonesia erupted. This eruption produced an estimated 2,800 cubic kilometers of ash and volcanic material, which blanketed much of India and Southeast Asia. The eruption is believed to have had significant global consequences, including a potential cooling effect on the Earth's climate and a genetic bottleneck in human evolution. It is important to note that supervolcano eruptions are relatively rare events and can occur on timescales of hundreds of thousands to millions of years. The bottleneck effect is a genetic phenomenon that occurs when a population is drastically reduced in size, leading to a significant loss of genetic diversity. This can happen due to a number of reasons, such as natural disasters, diseases, or human-driven factors, such as overhunting or habitat destruction. In the context of human evolution, the bottleneck effect refers to the theory that modern humans descended from a small group of our ancestors who survived a population bottleneck event around 70,000 years ago. This bottleneck event has been attributed to a number of factors, including a massive volcanic eruption in Sumatra, Indonesia, which caused a global climate shift and led to a severe reduction in human population size. As a result of this bottleneck event, the genetic diversity of the human population was greatly reduced, which means that many genetic variations that had been present in our ancestors were lost. This loss of genetic diversity is thought to have had a number of important effects on human evolution, including making us more susceptible to certain diseases and reducing our ability to adapt to changing environmental conditions. Despite the reduction in genetic diversity caused by the bottleneck event, some genetic variations were still present in the surviving population. Over time, these variations became more common as the human population grew and diversified, leading to the genetic diversity that we see in modern humans today. The supervolcano that most are worried about is Yellowstone, which is located in northwestern Wyoming. If the Yellowstone supervolcano were to erupt, it would have catastrophic effects, not just for the local region, but potentially for the entire planet. First, 
the eruption would likely be much more explosive and violent than a typical volcanic eruption. The initial blast could send ash, gas and debris tens of thousands of feet into the atmosphere, causing a massive ash cloud to form. This ash cloud could spread across the United States and even circle the globe within a matter of weeks or months, blocking out sunlight and reducing temperatures worldwide. The ash cloud could also trigger a nuclear winter effect, with the reduced sunlight causing a drop in global temperatures and disrupting weather patterns. This could lead to crop failures and food shortages, as well as a range of other environmental and societal impacts. Closer to the eruption site, the ash and debris from the blast could cause widespread devastation. Buildings, roads and other infrastructure could be buried under several feet of ash, and local communities could be cut off from the outside world for weeks or even months. The explosion could trigger massive mudslides and landslides, and ashfall could pollute water supplies, making them unsafe to drink. In the long term, the Yellowstone eruption could have even more serious consequences. The ash cloud and subsequent nuclear winter could trigger a mass extinction event, wiping out entire species of plants and animals. The eruption could also lead to a long-term cooling trend, with global temperatures dropping and climate patterns shifting. Overall, an eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano would be a global catastrophe, with far-reaching and long-lasting consequences for the planet and all its inhabitants. Yellowstone National Park, in collaboration with the US Geological Survey, closely monitors the Yellowstone supervolcano for any changes in behavior that could indicate an impending eruption. The park has an extensive network of monitoring stations that continuously measure and record data on earthquake activity, ground deformation, gas emissions, and other indicators of volcanic activity. The USGS also maintains a Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, which is responsible for monitoring and studying the volcano. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory uses a variety of tools, including seismometers, GPS instruments, and satellite imagery, to track changes in the volcano's behavior. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory also works closely with other agencies, such as the National Park Service and the Federal Emergency Management Agency, to ensure that plans are in place to respond to a potential eruption. In addition to monitoring the volcano, the park and its partners conduct extensive research on the geology, ecology and hydrology of the region. This research provides important insights into the processes that drive volcanic activity and helps scientists better understand the potential hazards associated with the Yellowstone supervolcano. The park and its partners also engage in outreach and education programs to help the public better understand the risks and potential impacts of a volcanic eruption. So, what do you make of these recent discoveries and announcements? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.